Hello, I'm State Representative Marcy Topol of the 147th District in Montgomery County. The budget address recently presented by the Governor shows a shift in mindset. He has presented a budget with no large-scale broad-based tax increases and is proposing a number of cost-cutting measures, priorities that have been championed by House Republicans for several years. Of course, there are still many details to be presented, but the starting point is encouraging. Joining me today is one of the people at the forefront of the process, Majority Appropriations Chairman Representative Stan Saylor. Representative Saylor, welcome. Glad to be here. We have a few questions for you today to, so that my constituents can better understand what's happening here in Harrisburg. Can you explain to our viewers what your role as Chairman of the House Appropriations Committee, chair, uh, committee is? Uh, my role as Chairman of the Appropriations Committee is early on in the process we start this week was to basically break the governor's budget down into real numbers in comparison of what we spent last year in a certain line item to what we spent this year. And, and some people, like an, a line item is what do we spend for basic ed? K through 12. What do we spend in uh, retirement benefits and so forth under the Department of Education? What are the general uh, costs for the personnel in the department? Is to break those out so that members of the General Assembly and particularly the House members can see exactly how they compare to last year's budget and they can make value judgments on that. The other thing we look at is also the revenue that the governor has proposed. What revenue is being brought in? What is he proposing to give that to the, the members? We'll then proceed uh, in about a week and a half from now, we will start to have hearings and ask each of the secretaries and bureau directors to come for the, the appropriations committee and testify and take questions from members of the General Assembly as to exactly how the budget's working. Uh, some members may have questions about whether programs are really working to meet the needs of the constituents and voters back home, uh, and also why they may need an increase if there's a proposed increase uh, or a proposed decrease, why uh, a decrease. So those are kind of where we go, and then after those hearings, uh, I will put together a budget uh, to be presented to the House of Representatives. Uh, most likely it won't be the same as the governor's, it never it has been, whether a Democrat or Republican governor. But uh, we'll present it to the General Assembly and we'll start the process moving with the Senate and the House and negotiations with the governor as well. Right. Then can you further expand on the process once the, the uh, budget hearings conclude? What happens then in, in the Senate and the House? Yeah, we will meet with the governor multiple times uh, to talk about possibly further cuts, further enhancements. Uh, revenues where members of the House or the Senate may say, well, you know, Governor, you propose this tax or this uh, fee increase. Uh, we don't have the votes for that. So we either have to get rid of some more cuts in the budget or we have to look at another way of raising the dollars to pay for the budget. So those negotiations go on for months and weeks and we will meet multiple times, sometimes during a week, uh, sometimes for long hours, sometimes just to kind of exchange ideas and go back and research uh, what the proposals are that each side brings to the table. Mm -hmm. And as the newly elected chair of the House Appropriations Committee, what's your vision uh, for the fiscal realities of the state and the challenges that we face? Well, the challenge is we're not bringing in the revenue that we had hoped to bring in this year. I have a, a philosophy, and I've always had it since I've been in the General Assembly, but even as a small businessman before I came to General Assembly is, I always estimate, uh, estimate my expenses high and what money I'm bringing in low so that when the end of the year comes and I'm looking at the balance sheet, I make sure that I've accounted for possible things that we didn't expect at the beginning of the year, but that may happen. So that you usually come out in pretty good shape. I think we've made some mistakes over the last several years. We've been estimating revenues high and expenditures low, and that means you're going to end up deficit spending. So my goal this year will be to be more fiscally conservative in our income estimates. And, and things that are affecting our income has been a big change in people's buying habits. Uh, we know a lot more people today are buying on the internet. Well, under federal laws, we cannot tax sales on the internet. So we're losing additional revenues in the sales tax area. Uh, we're one of about 30 states in the country who have seen a real downturn in our sales tax collections due to the internet sales. The other thing, people's buying habits have changed as well. It used to be your, you or I would buy our son or daughter or, or nephew or whoever uh, some game or we'd buy them clothing. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Today, uh, in the modern technology world today, they don't want that. They want the gift card. Mm -hmm. Well, when you and I buy those gift cards at Christmas time, we don't pay sales tax on those. So the revenue and way we collect things is changing demographically. So we have to adjust the way we propose income uh, spending and uh, income revenue uh, as we go forward. Okay, and what are the major spending proposals that the governor is seeking and what areas receive the most funding? Education and Health and Human Services are the two departments that receive about 80% of the funding. Uh, if you add higher education, college and universities in Pennsylvania, uh, education is still below what we spend in Health and Human Services, welfare, Medicaid, things like that, uh, services to senior citizens. Uh, the governor this year has proposed merging the Department of Health and Human Services with the Department of Aging, the Department of uh, Drug and Alcohol, and the Department of Health. He's proposing there are savings by merging those departments together, elimination of duplications. In education, he's proposing more spending on K through 12 with, and special education dollars. Uh, those are major spending increases. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we have a lot of uh, increased spending in this year, again, as we have for the last several years, has been our pension costs as well as our federal mandates. And that's one of the things that I'm hoping that Washington pays close attention to is they are mandating as much as sometimes a billion dollar increase a year just in mandates from the federal government. Uh, and I'm one of those that believes if you're gonna tell me how to spend my money, you need to give me that money to spend. So I'm hoping that the new administration, I'm hoping the new Congress will take a look, bigger look at how they're mandating what we spend. And speaking of the spending side of the budget, can you comment on the proposals that the governor has put forth to pay for his budget? The governor's proposed expanding the sales tax, for instance, on uh, if you're a person, a uh, company that uh, needs computer services, you need a new program because you're changing the way you're doing your financial system. If you go out and buy, uh, or I should say you buy, hire a consultant to do those computer changes in your system, he's proposing that that's now taxable. The governor's proposing uh, to uh, institute a severance tax in Pennsylvania. Uh, that severance tax has been on the table for a long time. The biggest problem that many people in Pennsylvania have with it is it sounds great, but what we've seen is a real downturn in, as we've seen at the gas pump, uh, lowering of gas prices, natural gas is made, uh, those kind of things are tough. So the revenue projections he has in the budget, we're gonna look very closely at because we don't believe they're quite where they need to be. But we'll vet those out with him and his budget secretary and his secretary of revenue as to how they arrived at them uh, mm -hmm. and see if the revenue he's projecting to come in is real. Okay. And where can constituents find more information about the budget? The area that they can go on to is they can go on to the House of Pro Republican Appropriations website and they can find the budget on there and the breakdowns that we'll have. All the information we give to members will also be available on that site for the public. Well, thank you. That's all the time we have for today's program. I'm Rep. Marcy Topol, and if you have questions about what we've discussed or need assistance for any state matter, feel free to contact me at my local office or through my website. That information will be shown in a moment. Thanks again for watching.